Yes, I think 2020, um, and I would say even 2021, as we continue uh, through the pandemic, the, the industry demonstrated that they do play a very significant role uh, to connect policy, uh, regulation, and the, and the economy. And in fact, uh, it's commendable that the banking industry rose to the occasion in 2020, helping customers weather the year that was by, for one, restructuring a lot of the loans on their books. They restructured a total of 54%, which was 1.63 trillion worth of loans on their books. And these restructures were in the form of giving extensions of repayments, moratoriums, in some cases just lowering the payments, and people getting true payment holidays for a significant period of time. On top of all that, they did that without increasing interest rates, which actually were, uh, were down year over year. And on top of that, we also gave a lot of, um, um, sorry, cut a lot of the charges that we would uh, levy on our customers. Charges to do with the restructures were deferred. Um, mobile money charges were deferred. Pestling charges were deferred, and many other charges. And all that, all that, the banks did and showed resilience at the end of the year. So by the end of the year, for us, profitability was down 30%. You know, bank industry profitability was down 30%. Banks still showed resilience in terms of their capital, in terms of their liquidity, and still in terms of their ability to meet customer needs even to the end of the year. I think what, again, um, banks reacted very quickly to the needs of their customers and indeed the community. And what were those needs? One was we needed to make sure that we minimize physical contracts uh, to minimize the spread of COVID-19. That meant we needed to act quickly to lower the traffic in our branches. And what banks did were very, were very quick to cut about by helping customers move on to digital channels. I think last year, the adoption on digital channels rose significantly. So that by the end of the year, almost every customer of every bank at least is aware or knows that they can access bank services through digital, digital channels. Furthermore, banks made quick investments in the areas of cybersecurity as people migrated towards uh, digital channels, and also in training their own staff. For a number of the cases, we also had lots of our staff, uh, at some point, maybe 50% of the banking staff working from home. And again, being able to equip them with techno technology to still be able to support customers. So I'd say banks in general did deploy technology a whole lot uh, to weather 2020. COVID-19 pandemic revealed the vulnerability of our micro, um, and, uh, micro and small enterprises, which contribute about 85% of businesses and create about 70% of employment in this country. And therefore, we must do a whole lot to support them uh, going forward. What that has meant is that just as we rose last year to support these SMEs, by educating them a bit more, exposing them to capacity building initiatives. We must continue to do that in, you know, going forward, uh, to help them with that. I believe there's a survey done by the central bank uh, early last year that showed that 75% of SMEs were not sure that they would survive the crisis because they didn't have fallback uh, liquidity available. And Based on where we are today, a year, a year and more from that point when that survey was done, we have still seen SMEs going back to work or SME people going back to work, which means that there has been more resilience than the survey indicated at that point. That resilience has come from the support that the banks have given, and obviously the community as a whole, the government and their investments. But going forward, that must continue. One of the things banks are working with government on is on this credit guarantee scheme uh, for, micro, uh, for micro enterprises. Uh, we are about 12 banks on pilot right now. That's going to be expanded to other banks. The government, I'm, I know they're putting more money into that scheme. The idea is to support these uh, micro and small enterprises survive in the near future. So those are some of the things that I think banks will continue to do. On our side as an industry, we continue to train through our uh, INUA program. Uh, we have so far trained about 10,000 SMEs and we'll continue to do the same thing going forward. So I think that covers some of the initiatives that we're going to be doing.
think overall, I would say that the, uh, the banking industry, working very closely with the regulator, uh, the Central Bank of Kenya, were perhaps the first to rise to the occasion uh, when COVID hit our shows last year. And they rose to the occasion coming up with initiatives to support businesses and to support individuals. The plans that we laid, we executed them as banks, as well as the industry, working again very closely with the regulator. And I give credit to that, um, uh, to, to that action that I think was perhaps one of the single most important action to be taken to save the economy of the country. We were quick to identify which sectors needed support. We were quick to identify which individuals needed support. We were quick to let our customers know to come to us and tell us what their situations were. And in so doing, I think we were able to work together with them. In fact, I believe last year, our uh, customers rated us, uh, meaning the banking industry, as being very responsive, which was a complete opposite to what had been the rating that we experienced before. So I think that, is, uh, that shows that when we come together as an industry, we can make a change.